compared the sentences actually served by those uh, Nazis convicted at Nuremberg? Well, um, no, I haven't. Well, I think that's the question. Um, you know, also we're not comparing the actual crimes, but I do have the uh, the actual figures here. Uh, if we if we to omit the 41 years served by Hess, who of course died in prison, the other six who weren't hanged, but who did serve jail sentences, actually spent a total of 76 years in jail. And of course, H Hindley and Brady have spent 68 years mm -hmm. at the moment. Uh huh. So, you know, that's just um, a, a stark comparison, really. But I, I, you know, I, uh, I've never seen any comments by the uh, the uh, Jewish community as to this uh, particular aspect. No, you haven't. No. So I just wondered if if they have any uh, have any thoughts about the matter. Right, you do. Do you really? Well, you know, they have thoughts about most things, as most communities have, don't they? Uh, uh, sadly, yes. Sadly, yes. Almost all communities do seem to have thoughts about almost everything. Yep. Yep. Um, and, and you have given us thoughts of a mass murderer and a bunch of exterminators. Well, I mean, uh, we, we can't really call uh, the five victims, uh, we can't classify that as mass murder as compared to Lockerbie or the Oklahoma bombing. Oh, you've we? given us a couple more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Crowd, crowded our mind now with yep. um, with um, the very, the, the most appalling of human mm. tragedies. Thank you. Is there any kind of value that's to be had from the images that you are feeding us? Um, well, it, what's it, the point? Well, the point is to look at the, the actual... Um, Why? the actual sentences, for instance... Well, um, why, though? Why is this on your mind at 10 to 6 on this otherwise impeccable Saturday morning? As the uh, birds begin their, mm. their routine and glorious ritual of sound and sight, as the, as the sky begins to lighten with the sun of a one and only day that is this one, with all that there is, why do you have to bring us the Moors murders, in coupling with the Nazis, in coupling with Lockerbie, and, um, sorry, what was the other one? The Oklahoma Bank. Oh, the Oklahoma Bank, mm. yeah. yeah. Well, um, Welcome to your world, but why? Well, because um, if, if we were to compare and contrast the, the various... No, but why brands. is this your... Why, can I, I'm really interested to know, why mm. is this your thought for the day? Why is this well, I mean, I your could, agenda? No, I could have brought you another thought for the day, the, uh, the observer's John Sweeney's uh, documentary last Thursday on Chechnya and his rather startling voiceover which definitely indicated that the Russians had planted the bombs themselves in Moscow. Yes, but why? Why is this on your mind? Does it worry you that this is on your mind at 10 to 6 this Saturday morning? Does well, it, it concern you? It concerns me that the, these sorts of aspects of uh, life aren't getting the coverage even within the broadsheet press. In other words, we've got Mr. Blair currently in in uh, in Russia, and he's going to be. He has said, you know, Putin is combating terrorists, mm. whereas the Observer's ace reporter on the spot. Uh, well, what's, your, what's your name again? Steve. How old are you? Old enough. Would you mind me asking what age you are? Uh, I'm in my 40s. You're in your 40s. What's your line? What What's your profession? I don't have a profession at the moment, but... Um, what did you do? Oh, just um, administrative work. In in what sort of capacity? Well, various capacities, you know. Such as? Well, um... I'm only interested. You don't have to answer if you don't feel like it. Well, um... Within the uh, gaming industry for a number of years. The gaming industry? Yeah. What does that mean? Okay, <laughs> right down to the, the brass tax, it was uh, uh, being a manager of a betting shop. You're, you're a bookie. Fine, a, 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 noble, a noble profession, a noble profession. Yeah. And um, 
Who else is in the house at the moment? Nobody at the moment. You're alone? Yep. Have you, and have you been thinking about this, Brady and the Nazis and the Oklahoma bombings and the, the, the horrors of Chechnya and, um, sorry, what was the other one? I've missed one again. Uh, Lockerbie. Oh, Lockerbie, yeah. Well, you, I mean, they you, can I, mean, I ask, I mean, do you think about it a lot? No, but they're all in the news to a certain extent. In fact, if so, you... So you think about these things because they're led by the news? No. Although, although your point is that they're not in the news enough. Well, the, the reality of the, the crimes, in other words, we get, we get the spin. Okay, we can take another atrocity, which involved 20 black Britons. Is there, was, is there was another one coming? Yeah, Waco. Oh, Waco. Right. Yeah, 20 oh. black Britons were burned, killed. Burned alive, if I remember rightly. Pardon? Burned, burned alive. alive. Burned, burned alive. Burned alive. Oh, some of them were shot, yeah. Uh, th th those that weren't shot. Mm, yeah. All right. Well, you think this is, this is something of a morbid... Uh, I just interest. have this for you. I just have this for you. Mm. Uh, honestly, just be kind. Be as kind to yourself as you can. Yeah. Because your concern is genuine and, and it's well heard, but but you you don't deserve... You're a good guy. You don't deserve to to have to fill your head with these things too much because thinking about them too much can... It, it probably isn't a good thing. And I'm, I'm serious when I say that the next time that you call a phone-in program, I'd really like you just to balance this call by wanting to celebrate something. Are you with mm, me? Yeah. Do you see my point? Mm. And, I'll look for, and I'll look forward to it and hope very much that it's on this show. Okay. Okay. Good man. Bye for now. Yes. Goodbye. All right, 700, 40, 50, 60. Well, I always remember that line in Star Trek where um, some people get beamed aboard. It's in the next generation. Some people get beamed aboard and they're from the 21st, 20th century, right? And they come aboard the Starship Enterprise and they go, oh, amazing. And then somebody says, where's the television? You see? And Captain Picard says, oh, yes, yeah, the television. <clears throat> I can't get down that low. Oh, yes, yeah, the television. It was very popular. The 20th century, but it died out around about the year 2010. Hmm. And I thought, yeah, maybe it will. Yeah. Maybe the internet will kill it off. Maybe an English person would have been being wrong and go, oh, yes, why should tea's made? Yes. It's a possibility. Do you know the thing about the tea's made is in the summer, if you put your milk in your cup for the tea, cup of tea the following morning and leave it there overnight, it's gone off hmm. by the morning. Line six, you're next. Good morning, you're on Talk Sport. Hello, Hi. yes. Um, I would just like uh, to talk, sorry, um, yes, I would just like to discuss the issues of teenage violence and how they're getting uh, more aggressive each day. Um, my friend was on earlier talking to you um, about censorship, but I'd like to uh, change my topic completely. Um, my friend goes up to a place uh, to skateboard and recently uh, some of his friends have had their nose broken and have been recently beat up. I'd, uh, and things are getting worse these days. I'd just like to know uh, your views on the situation. Well, I don't agree that things are getting worse. And I'm never, never comfortable with conversations which contain the phrases these days. Uh, my number one hate is nowadays. Um, especially being quite young, if I may, which you are. Yeah. You, you don't really have any authority mm -hmm. to compare present day treatment and activities with anything else. So you can't really say it's getting worse. Yeah, well, I know. It's just um, I've, I've been experiencing it more lately. I, I myself... Ah, have... right. Well, now you've got a fact that I can't uh, penetrate. I can't, I, can't, I can't deny that, that you have been experiencing it more often than previously. Yeah. That's fine. Fine, but what I'm, one of the things I'm dead against is, is alarmism, unless, of course, I'm doing it deliberately. Right. In which case, it's great fun. And, and, and the, the more often we say that, uh, you know, the world is going down the plug hole, the more we're frightening our children. Not there are any children listening at the moment, but there's, there are vulnerable people listening. Yes, I know. Yeah. Well, I always try to guard against that. But I don't think it's true. I mean, you weren't around in the 60s and the 50s. They like to of each other on sea, South End Seafront every bank holiday. Mm -hmm. You had running battles involving hundreds, maybe thousands of mods and rockers, which were every bit as violent, much more violent. It still happens in the news, though. You still see uh, riots going on in the world. It's, I mean, it, it's not, not... Not teenage riots. Well, not teenage riots, but riots still do continue. It's not as if they've totally ceased. Who said they did? 
Well, I suppose... I don't agree with you that it's happening more. I think it's happening less. I really do. I suppose... Slowly. Yeah. Marge, it's marginal, but things don't happen overnight. Okay, the Berlin Wall came down. That was kind of overnight, but... But, um... If we're talking about humanity... Making, making making valuable changes. It's bound to happen over over generations. Um, it's just that I noticed that people are, are picked on more easily nowadays for no reason. By, uh, are you doing it again now? You've used the magic word nowadays. Compared to when? Well, I, I, do, I just don't think that people back whenever you're talking about uh, would uh, get picked on for no reason like they do nowadays. They... they they don't, they don't even get picked on uh, if, they, if, they, if they're different. They just get picked on for no reason. People do it. Oh, and this is something that's just happening to you and nobody else knows what it's like. No, um, people... Next might... you're going to tell us that your generation invented sex. No, but pe people, people at my school know what, what I'm talking about when I say that. Yes, and people who've ever been to school at any time in, in the history of humanity know what you're talking about because it's always happened. It's happening less now than it used to, because we're aware of it. There wasn't a radio program where people could go and talk about bullying mm -hmm. 50 years ago. Yes. I suppose. For sure. Um, and the more we talk about things, the more things get better. So you think they're getting better? I'm certain of it. I'm not, I don't think so. I'm absolutely certain of it. Humanity is on an upward curve and has been from day one. All right. No, there's no question about that. The world is going to be a better place when your generation are running it than, than now, when my generation are running it. And your children will make a better job of it than you do, yeah. generally. Only marginally, though. But in 10,000 years' time, God, I wish I was alive then. Yeah. That'll be a place to be. Thanks for your call. Okay, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye. Are you there? Oh, you do. On to line four. Hello, line four. Sorry. Who's this? Roger, from uh, London here. Hi, Roger. I spoke to you the other week. Uh, you were on another forum then. I don't know if you remember speaking to me, but um, it's, uh, it's great to hear you back on anyway. Now, tell me, I've listened for two weekends now. Yeah. And where is he? Where's yeah. Simon from Hampshire? Yeah. Yeah. Ho! Hey! Ha! Woo! Who knows? Who knows? I really, I really thought you would have phoned in by now. Who but... knows? Now, you're harking back here, just to fill listeners in, you're harking back here to one of the, possibly for me, the greatest phone-in caller in British radio. He was great. He was great. He was extraordinary. <laughs> and I never, ever found out uh, if he was genuine. I have to say that, because you always have that suspicion. Yeah. He was so good, in a sort of a weird way, that I began to suspect that perhaps he was a piece of theatre. <laughs> but I have no way of knowing because I don't know who he is. I don't think Simon's his real name. No, there was some uh, there was some great chats between you two. They were great. He that's what we need. That's so what we need. To... Homo it was funny. He was so <laughs> homophobic. Well, maybe he's listening tonight, so you never know. He might so know. terrified of of gay men. Terrified of them, <laughs> wasn't he? Do you remember? Yeah, it was great. It was great. In the army, and uh, and I asked him out. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I asked him out because I wanted to meet him. <laughs> he tackled me straight up. You could tell that he just assumed that if I was in the media, I was necessarily one stop down from Liberace, you know. Yeah. But of course, he's not gay. Oh, no, he's dead, so you can say so. Nice to speak to you, Tommy. Good fella. Speak to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. The sticky line. Good morning, you are on Talk Sport. If you turn your radio off, we'll have a chat. Who's this? Hello, Tommy. Hiya, who are, who are you? Uh, my name's Alan. Hi, Alan. Uh, I just phoned up for an argument, Tommy. You come to the right place. <laughs> I'm sure the best man in the radio for arguing. Uh, it's been said. Pick a subject. Pick a subject. Nice one. I like it. Uh, the life's work of uh, surrealist painter René Aha. <coughs> uh, uh -huh. Don't pick a specialised subject. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you pick a subject. Uh, evolution. Okay. Uh, it's a load of rubbish. Yeah. That's why it's called the theory of evolution. Yeah. Because it doesn't make sense. Yeah, well, it does. <coughs> it doesn't. Well, you better explain why it doesn't make sense. First of all, you better explain what you understand by evolution, because you might have got that wrong. Yeah, well, evolution, according to Darwin's theory, 
Uh, well, I think it's basically the the fastest and the strongest survive in every generation. And animals evolve to fit uh, the habitat where they live, which I would think makes sense. Well, you haven't really got it quite right, have you? I don't know. Well, how much of Darwin's work have you read? I haven't read any of it. So where did you pick up these bits and pieces of um, knowledge about what Darwin might or might not have said? Yeah, well, just basically off television and radio, listening to other people talking about it. Mm, is that really good enough? You couldn't convict a man on that, could you? Well, I've heard various so-called experts on television uh, saying according to theory... Uh, but it's still hearsay. Well, exactly, that's, that's what I'm adding. No, 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 your evidence is hearsay. But if it's an expert that's saying it, it's not hearsay, a so-called expert. It is, it is hearsay because you are hearing what somebody else says about it. If you want to know what Darwin had to say, you get down and do the work and read Darwin. Well, I could, I could read the expert's book, I don't know. I don't see a difference between reading the book and you're hearing not, the expert's You're not speak. entitled to an opinion about evolution. Of course I'm entitled to an opinion. No, Everybody's not. entitled to an opinion. That's absolute rubbish. No, it's That's not. That's appalling rubbish and that is why we have world wars. Well, you're entitled to your opinion, you Tommy. I, I am entitled to my opinion because I have worked out <laughs> what entitles me to my opinion. Now, what in, do you think entitles you to your opinion? Yeah, just being a member of the human race entitles That's me to my opinion. That's not good enough, is it? Of course it's good enough. It's not good enough. If you've got an average intelligence, you're entitled to an opinion. You are not. Of course you are. You are. You simply aren't. Why not? Before you are entitled to an opinion. You must know the subject thoroughly. There's more to it than that. What more does it tell? Before you are entitled to an opinion on a subject, you must research the subject fully. I don't think so. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> and then, when you form your opinion, you must be sure that in holding it and in voicing it, you do both yourself and the person who has to endure listening to your opinion more good than harm. And that's the crucial element. The crucial element. Tell me you're paid people to endure listening to your opinion. I paid quite handsomely, I would imagine. How much do you think I get per show? Yeah, I'll take a guess and I'll say a thousand pounds. <laughs> or maybe more. Far oh, more than that. More? Well, obviously. It's What's a national more? radio station. A thousand pounds petrol money. Well, maybe petrol money to you, Tommy, to somebody that isn't working. I don't imagine it'd be petrol money. Anyway, you're getting off the subject there. No, no, I'm not. You you're should... going off the subject. I'm not. You're the person who introduced my salary to the conversation. How no. am I going off the subject? Because the, the, the subject was Can I just uh, you Darwin's theory of evolution. Can I just interrupt you for a second? Are, are you enjoying this? Yes. Good. That's all right. Not a good argument for the just one. Fantastic, isn't it? Great. I oh. love it. I love it. You're the best guy in the radio for that. Fire Street. I wouldn't phone anybody else up. I give my lawyer advice, you know. <laughs> I bet you do. I bet you give everybody advice. No, I don't. I've got a t-shirt. I'm a great believer in not giving advice unless it is specifically sought. Mm -hmm. And when I do give it, I try to anticipate what it is that the person has already decided to do. And I tend to fall into line in line with that. This is what makes human beings so brilliant, so special. Yes. They can communicate with us. No other animals, as far as we know, can do this. That is perfectly true. And that's another argument. There's no such thing as an intelligent animal. How do you know that? Because I know this is a fallacy. Oh, because you do. That's yes. not much of an argument, is it? It's just, no, it's just a fact. It is not a fact. Animals aren't intelligent. They react. They don't it, think. It is not. How do you know that? Because I know that. How? Because uh, the anim if animals thought... What? There would be what? two How dogs you... in the phone look, and you were having a look, conversation. Look, I am a professional animal trainer. Yes, so I've heard. What do you mean, so you've heard? There's an implication. Yeah, I've heard you before. It's simply true. You work with dolphins and whales. I work with dolphins and whales. Yeah, a lot of people think they're intelligent. A lot of people do. Yeah. Well, why aren't you asking me? Then? Well, when dolphins have got human How? beings swimming How about, many? they'll believe you. How many dolphin trainers have you spoken to about this prior to me? Yeah. Uh, None. Well, I was going to tell a lie there, but you're right, none. Yeah, so if, if you had anything of a scientist about you, 
at the very first opportunity to test your own theory, surely you would see the fine intelligence. Problem. You would see that, and you would say, to, "What I do if I meet somebody who knows something that I don't, right? And I know something well, you don't." Intelligence. Right? The definition of intelligence is the capability of original thought, which animals can't do. No, that is not the definition of intelligence. And please don't get the damn dictionary out. <laughs> no, that's my definition. Okay, well, 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 well we play definition of our own words. Fantastic. Make yeah. up our own definitions of words. Yeah, of course. That is super. In that case, for all I know, when you're talking about mind. evolution, you might be talking about uh, creationism. It's just creation that you pronounce creationism idea. evolution. I'm getting a bit bored with this one now. Shall we change it? Fed up. Yeah, a bit fed up, really. Would you like to argue a bit now? Um, Smoke. Smoking. Smoking is a bad taste, isn't it? Oh, right. There's a green on that one. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Clear off, God. Um, I think he uh, he understood it too well. We, oh, sport. Good morning. Who's this? Good morning. That you, Tom? Speaking. Hi. I've changed your name now to Oliver Cromwell. When me and you decide to get rid of the ruling classes, what are we going to put in its place? Hello? You don't have to put anything in its place. Oh, we, we're going to have some sort of somebody up the top, ain't we? No, you haven't been reading your Emma, Emma Goldblum, mate. We don't have to have anybody ruling us. Well, I hope you ain't thinking of putting uh, Queen Bonus and Maggie Thatcher up there. Well, I've just said I haven't. What makes you put those words in my mouth? What makes you think you need anybody ruling you? Well, well we okay. don't. Well, exactly my point. We don't. But knowing nature as it is, yeah. when you when you win the war, there's somebody of power that always willing there to take the reins, isn't there? Well, you're drifting a little bit now. You started off by saying, if we got rid of the ruling classes, who would you put in their place? I don't think you need a government. I don't think you need anybody ruling you. I don't. I trust me. I don't you, need laws, I don't need police officers, I'm a good guy, I do the right thing. Yes, we don't go that way, does it? Human nature doesn't run like that. Well, yes, it does, actually. You think it does? I'm certain of it. I'm certain that we are all a good bunch. Well, I think uh, I'd like to join your I team. I like humanity. I like the face of humanity. I trust it. You do trust it? Enormously, implicitly. The achievements of mankind are... Uh, are, are so impressive over the last two or three thousand years. Well, I can give you one or two phases that uh, might come to mind, do you? Well, I'm you sure... You never that... trust your best friend? That's a phase. What? You never trust your best friend. Why not? Because your best friend will, t will take whatever you've got. Is that what you think? Well, when you win this uh, ruling class war, how do you think society will be run then? Well, I would like there to be no need for government and no need for authority. I don't uh, tell anybody what to do, and I don't like anybody telling me what to do. Oh, but how would it, how, 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 how would it carry on? You know, Not like that. It would be a wonderful place. But you know, it can't be like that. It can be like that, and it will be like that. When we're in, a f in just a few short thousand years from now, what we are and the world that we've created will seem so prehistoric, cruel and ludicrous to the folk that have come along. But, and yet at the same time, because they will have progressed so far, their understanding will extend to realise that it was the best we could do at the time. But pe people will eventually live in a world where there aren't any parliaments, there aren't any laws, there aren't policemen, there aren't cells or prisons. None of those things will be necessary. And you only have to look at the history of the last two or three hundred years in this country or in Western Europe to realise that that is the direction we're going in. Oh, I, I, you think so? I think we're going downhill. Yeah, well, I thought you'd say that. I do, honestly. You're wrong. You're desperately wrong, and it shows that you haven't really bothered too much with your history. I have, I have. Well, you, you take history. You tell me one Christian church leader that knows the first thing about Christianity. That's got nothing to do with the argument about the development of society. No, but they're supposed to stand for the good things in life. It's completely irrelevant what you've just said, and it shows loose, shabby thinking. I don't think so. Well, I'm telling you it does. Well, you tell me one Christian leader. It's not the point. The point is that we are talking about authority, and we are talking about the fact that... Uh, the future 
we will have a better future if we relinquish authority. And if you look at the way that authority stamped itself just a couple of hundred years ago in this country, you will easily see that there is less crude authority in government now than there was a couple of oh, hundred years ago. Oh, yes, I can see where you're coming from. And from so there. what you have then is a pattern of development which will continue, because it has continued for hundreds and thousands of years. There is such a thing as giving you a bit of rope and then pulling it back, though, isn't there? I have no idea what that means. Well, it's hidden. It's hidden. They give you freedom, but freedom's not there. Oh, again, I don't know what you're talking about now. But thank you very much indeed for your call and having the opportunity to celebrate anarchy. 08 700 40 50 60. Line morning. one, you're on Talk Sport Live. Good morning. Who's this? Oh, hi, it's Joanna. Hello, Joanna. Um, hi. Um, I've just been listening to your show. It's been quite interesting. Only um, I think you should be more tolerant about people's opinions. I really do. You, 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 t you just tend to shout them down. Well, if you don't mind me saying so, that's not very tolerant of you. Why? I'm listening to your show. I think it's a very interesting show, and I think you're a very educated man. Um, but you, I think you should be tolerant more of people's attitudes. Why? and uh, Because I don't think it's nice to shout somebody down. Shouting just, people down, I'm but testing you, people's attitudes. Yes, but you said earlier that, people, that that man wasn't entitled to his opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. Look, I've just Otherwise, explained why that is not true. That is simply not true. Let me <laughs> Tell you you wouldn't have a radio show if people didn't have their opinion, don't that you That isn't true. Again, that's, that's not true. That, that, yes. Again, you're... Not, a, yes, go on. You are overstating your case there. Why? Because I would have a radio show if people yeah. didn't express their opinions. It would be different. <laughs> well, you wouldn't have this type of radio I'm, show. I'm, I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm hedging you towards uh, precision. Precision. A bit of precision in what you're saying. Right. So you, but earlier you said we did, um, somebody was talking about, um, oh, what was it? And you said, oh, we haven't, oh, that's right, being ruled by the ruling classes. And you said we haven't had a chance to. Now, precision would then have told you, yes, we have. We had a civil war in this country and we did behead a king. That is precision. Oh, I'm sorry, but that... That, that is, rather sorry, yes. sorry attempt at a revolution didn't work. Yes, it, I know, because... It, it all sort of like got yeah, but you, swept under yeah, the Yeah, but you said it didn't happen. You said we haven't had a chance hmm. it, it, to have a revolution. It didn't happen in full. <laughs> the French did it a lot better than we did. Absolutely. Didn't they? But then it, And know, the Americans got to throw us out. Of, yeah, absolutely. This is the only country absolutely. that's never, ever risen up against a tyrant. Uh... Well, yes, the Civil War did. We had the British Civil yeah, but War. But we let them back in again. We let his son in. Well, of course we did, yes, but that was mean, a silly dollar. That's a, a hell of a revolution, that, isn't it? <laughs> well, we'll cut his head off, and then, then I don't know what we should do. We'll not let his son... Not straight away. Not so, I think we had 11 years. Then we'll let now. his son be the king again. Feeble. <laughs> Feeble. Yeah, that's, uh, that was because the only person who had the guts to do it had died. If I was to be precise, since I have studied history, then we'd be here all day. I've got to... I've got to well, exactly. You're I've, probably I've to, more educated than I am. I've right? got to... I've got to sum up. But my point about opinions is very important. I find too many people rush to an opinion. Oh, they rush to it? Your average taxi you've driver... you entitled to it. Your average taxi driver has got more uh, simple, swift opinions about mm. things than information. Yeah. Well, I agree with you, but I don't... But I didn't agree with you saying... You don't have the right to an, opi an, an opinion. You do. Everybody has a right to an opinion. Again, explain. What do you mean explain? Explain ah, what? Exactly. Have. You haven't thought about this. No, I have. I've Go thought. On, then. Explain I then. Explain if you've thought about it. Explain your thinking. Explain my thinking what about people having opinions? I think everybody is entitled to opinion. If if they're not right, then All obviously right, you've got to convince them that they're not right in a way that's not going to make them feel stupid. This is what I'm saying. I enjoy your show. You have a diversity of, of, of subjects and, and people on there. Look, but there yeah, are... All right, all right, all right, all right. It's, this is very, it's very kind of you uh, <laughs> to sort of say, actually, you're ever so good and you're ever so nice. nice but... And, uh, but on the business of not having an opinion, what I said before stands. Mm -hmm. I've given a lot of thought to what opinions I have and yeah. what opinions I'm not prepared to have. Mm -hmm. I want to satisfy myself that I have looked into the subject on which I pretend to have an opinion. Most crucially, most crucially, as I said to the last gentleman, most crucially, the essential litmus, the essential test of an of whether I'm whether I am prepared to maintain an opinion about something, right. is this, and this is an entirely original concept of my own. 
So you can kick it around as much as you like. This is not Socrates speaking. This is humble me. Before I'm prepared to pay host to an opinion, I've got to satisfy myself that in harboring it and expressing it, I will generally do more good than bad. Mm-hmm. Now, how can you have a problem with that? I don't have a problem with that. I just don't think that you should belittle people's opinions, probably because you're more intelligent than them, by shouting them down and telling them they're talking rubbish. You should say something like, well, I don't yeah. agree with you. If people are talking rubbish, I'll, I'll, I've got to tell them they're talking rubbish. <laughs> no, don't do that. Yeah, no, don't I will. Don't do that. No, I will, because sometimes people people are exasperating. In yeah, the, in but the you don't have sudden... to tell them that. You should be more yeah. tolerant. No, you no, should no. be. No, it no. would make for a better show, I think. No, that's absolutely yeah. not true. That, I th- yeah. Let me tell you something. Go on, you're going to tell me it's rubbish. What you? you just said was simply wrong. <laughs> in your opinion. Um, no, I right? can, no, I can prove that. How? Well, I can prove that by the popularity of programmes which which um, which cut the you-know-what. You're probably right. I'm certainly You're probably right. probably right. I'm on home ground. <laughs> what, what do you do for a living? Me, I'm a telephonist. And I ring you up and tell you about telephony? Um, probably, yes. You, you probably phone me up from a payphone, tell me you've lost money and swear at me, <laughs> yes. Well, of course, you see, I don't do that. Oh, of course you don't. And I'm not stupid enough to tell you oh. about your job. I'm not, stu- I'm not telling you about your job, I'm just telling and you... I didn't say that- you were being stupid. All I'm saying is that no. I'm not stupid enough to I- ring up somebody else, mm-hmm. okay, and, and tell them the gl- gory details of their job. No. No. I was just asking, I was just saying to you, I, 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 do, I do enjoy your show, but I don't like... Um, it seems to me that the, the way you speak to people, you're not prepared to listen to their opinion and say, well, okay, you might be right. Mm, well, if I don't think they are, then I'm not going to say that, Yeah, but I? what gives you, what makes your opinion right over theirs? Everybody's yeah. entitled to their opinion. You're yeah. entitled to yours, they're, they're entitled to theirs. Oh, let's not have this. You know, oh, going well. round and round. <laughs> it's getting deadly dull. There you go, you can never be right. You can never be right. What I'm saying is simply true. Um, if you're worried about other people's sensibilities, don't be. When somebody decides to phone a phone-in program, all right, they automatically disqualify themselves as listeners and become part of the show. And you only have to listen to a show like this for five minutes to realise exactly what the game is. And it's a game, it's a sport. And it's a good sport. Now, we've both got to get out of the way for the news okay. now. Okay, all right, thank you. Maybe it rings up and complains about the opinions in the news. <laughs> nice to talk to you. Thank you. Bye. Seven hundred forty fifty sixty. Tommy Boyd, Talk Sport. <laughs> Let's go straight to line five, shall we? You're on Talk Sport. Good morning. Who's this? down slightly. I wonder whether whoever it is has got what it takes to... Nah. We'll have a little listen there. Hey, we had a look. It was a piece of communication. Somebody was listening and somebody had a piece of music that they thought was more articulate than they are. Cool. Uh, let's go to line uh, six, shall we? Good morning, you're on Talk Sport. Who's this? Hello? Hello? Hello, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good stuff, thank you very much. What's your name? John. John. You're live on air. John, what did you want to say? Um, well, basically, there's a couple of things I want to say, actually. Um, it, I've been trying to get on for a long time now. And basically, what I'd like to say is a little bit thing now, because it's a Talk Sport, there's a lot of like to say about boxing, if that's okay. Yeah, terrific. Yeah. Tell you what, turn your radio off, John, and then you'll find it just a bit easier to uh, to get down to your point. Okay, sorry, I'll just turn it off there. Yeah, now. no worries. Right, it's gone. Yeah, um, basically what it is, there's a couple of things I'd like to say earlier. Um, earlier there was something that was said, uh, a lady rang up, this is probably a couple of hours ago now, and she turned around and um, the fellow, what's his name, Tony something, is it? Presenting the programme? Yeah. Tommy, yeah. Yeah, Tommy, that, sorry. That's me, yeah. All oh, right, that's you. Okay. Well, you said something about you've got to be nice at work. Mm. That was a couple of hours ago. Yeah. To be quiet, yeah. 
God, now, I, can't, I don't ever, ever remember saying that. No, what you actually said, said sometimes you've got to be nasty at work. You are speaking to a young lady at the time, and uh, unfortunately I've got to disagree on that, and I'd like to put the point across that, because um, I'm a shop steward on a job at the moment, and uh, I'd like to put the point across where it would be much better if everybody could try and work together and try and basically fight for individuals' rights regardless of what colour, creed or race they are and uh, try and make the workplace better for people. Yes, that's but, true enough. But apart from that, the, the main thing I actually wanted to speak about was boxing because um, I've been involved in boxing for nearly 14 years now. That's my sport. I'm made 26. I started boxing when I was 11. And um, there's one thing I'd love to make a big appeal to the British Medical Association on air and hopefully there'll be somebody listening because um, since head has been brought in, not so much amongst senior boxers, but amongst the junior amateur boxers, there's been so many more knockouts and serious injuries simply because the head guards, what basically happens, it makes the kids pick their target more because the way the head guard is set up and it leaves the knockout areas exposed, it leaves the chin exposed on the head guards. And I'd love to see them just stop using head guards, certainly amongst junior boxers in the amateur ranks. Because um, kids aren't, from that young age, they're not used to boxing. They're just coming into the sport. The difficulty you have is that you have a sport here in which the purpose is to hurt the other guy. No, it's not. Don't be stupid. It's not. The purpose is to hurt the other guy. Mm. Don't, don't, don't try and... Um, it will be feeble of you to try and say that that is not the aim of boxing. We all know that it is. Okay, now... So li live with that because that is a fact. Now, your problem is you have a sport, the purpose of which is to hurt the other guy, and yet at the same time, you don't want to hurt him too much. Um, can I disagree totally for a second? Because I said the reason for why. Because you say that the total purpose of boxing is to hurt somebody. It's not. And don't get me wrong. I mean, you go in there and you um, basically learn how to defend yourself. You learn how to throw your shots. Yeah? Darling, defending yourself and throwing the shots will not win you the fight. I will. It won't. It will. It trust simply me. won't. I will not trust you. How long have you been boxing? 14 years. Have you been hurt in the ring? Yes. Because the other guy meant to hurt you? Yes. Thank you. Yes. End of argument. No, there's no argument about it. The other guy's coming in the ring to try and hurt you. No, the other guy's coming in the ring to try and beat me. Hurt you? To beat me. If he can't beat you unless he hurts you. Of course you can beat someone without hurting them. <clears throat> Definition of terms are called for, I think. Any, um, pun any punch, wherever it lands, causes discomfort. True or false? True. Right. Discomfort is pain. Possibly not. Well, we're not using the same language here, then, are we, then? We're not, no, because... No. Right, can I, can I try and explain it to you? Um, this might sound really daft to you. Can you imagine, yeah? I mean, I've had, what, 140 odd bouts now, OK? And there's three buzzes I'll get out of boxing. Number one is winning the bout, which is the obvious buzz, yeah? Number two is when you land the shots you've been basically practicing in the gym three or four nights a week, different combinations, and you land them. And you know you've caught some of them shots, and you know you've heard them, yeah? Which is basically what you said earlier. And it's good. You know you've caught the fellow with the shots, you know you've hurt him, so you've hurt him with one shot, which allows you to carry on with the next combination afterwards, yeah? And the third buzz out of boxing is when someone actually lands a good shot on you and you know you've taken the best shot they can give you. It doesn't cause you no discomfort or not. It causes you no problems, let's put it that way. But the thing I'm after Sun, is... Sunshine, you're on the ropes here. Why? Yeah, exactly. Why? Because I'm not actually landing anything. You back yourself onto the ropes, really. I haven't. You have. 
And you, well, if you've been listening to yourself, you'd realise that you have. The one thing I realise, I'm a senior boxer. Now, the one thing I disagree with is um, now that they've brought the head guards into the boxing, I think they should start thinking about taking them out of boxing. Yes, and this is an interesting point, um, and one which is worth dwelling on. At what age... Um, were well, you talking about amateur boxing here? Yes. Okay. Uh, do all amateurs wear head guards? Yes. And, and, and in what way is that new? Well, it came in in uh, 91. Yeah. And the problem is, it's not so bad for senior boxers. Mm. Because you got to a stage where you're used to taking shots and um, it's not a major problem once you've been boxing for a while, you know? I mean, you do take the occasional good shot on the chin anyway. Mm. But the problem is, is when you've got young kids boxing, mm. and what happens is when you've got young kids boxing without head guards, they tend to throw their shots, mm. but they don't pick their shots particularly well. So basically what happens with the young kids, they, um, they tend to... Uh, throw the shots, they take the shots, it's not a major problem. But once the head guards are brought in, because purely the way the head guards are designed, it leaves the areas that are open to really incapacitate people. It leaves those areas open, like the donkey knuckle on the jaw. It, it basically makes the young kids pinpoint their shots much more, mm, mm, mm. which I think is very, very bad. So it's an attempt to, to reduce the dangers of the sport, which isn't working. Well, yes. listen, thanks for your call. Okay. Appreciate that. So, this is something of a morbid... Uh, I just interest. have this for you. I just have this for you. Mm -hmm. I, I, honestly, just be kind. Be as kind to yourself as you can. Yeah. Because your concern is genuine and, and it's well heard, but but you you don't deserve... You're a good guy. You don't deserve to to have to fill your head with these things too much because thinking about them too much can it, it probably isn't a good thing and I'm, I'm serious when I say that the next time that you call a phone-in program I'd really like you just to balance this call by wanting to celebrate something are you with mm, me yeah do you see my point mm. and I look for and I look forward to it and hope very much that it's on this show okay okay good man bye for now yeah Oh, it's 700, 40, 50, 60. Well, I always remember that line in Star Trek where um, some people get beamed aboard. It's in the next generation. Some people get beamed aboard and they're from the 21st, 20th century, right? And they come aboard the Starship Enterprise and they go, oh, that's amazing. And then somebody says, where's the television? You see. And Captain Picard says, oh, yes, yeah, the television. <clears throat> I can't get down that low. Oh, yes, yeah, the television. It was very popular the 20th century, but it died out around about the year 2010. Hmm. And I thought, yeah, maybe, maybe it will. Yeah. Maybe the internet will kill it off. Maybe an English person would have... ...compared to the sentences actually served by those uh, Nazis convicted at Nuremberg. Well, um, no, I haven't. Well, I think that's the question. Um, you know, obviously we're not comparing the actual crimes, but I do have the, uh, the actual figures here. Uh, if we if we to omit... The 41 years served by Hess, who of course died in prison. The other six who weren't hanged, but who did serve jail sentences, actually spent a total of 76 years in jail. And of course, H Hindley and Brady have spent 68 years at the moment. Uh huh. So, you know, that's just um, a, a stark comparison, really. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, I, uh, I've never seen any comments by the uh, the uh, Jewish community as to this uh, particular aspect. No, you haven't. No. So I just wondered if if they have any uh, have any thoughts about the matter. Right, you do. Do you really? Well, you know, they have thoughts about most things, as most communities have, don't they? Uh, uh, sadly, yes. Sadly, yes. Almost all communities do seem to have thoughts about almost everything. Yep. Yep. Well, various capacities, you know. Such as? Well, um... I'm only interested...
interested. You don't have to answer if you don't feel like it. Well, um, within the uh, gaming industry, a number of years. The gaming industry. Yeah. What does that mean? Okay, right down to the the brass tacks. It was uh, being a manager of a betting shop. You're you're a bookie. Fine, no, a, 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 a noble a noble profession, a noble profession. Yeah. And um, who else is in the house at the moment? Nobody at the moment. You're alone. Yep. Have you and have you been thinking about this, Brady and the Nazis and the Oklahoma bombings and the the, the horrors of Chechnya and um, sorry, what was the other one? I've missed one again. Uh, Lockerbie. Oh, Lockerbie. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, can I, mean, I ask? I mean, do you think about it a lot? No, but they're all in the news to a certain extent. In fact, if so, you, so you think about these things because they're led by the news. No. Although, although your point is that they're not in the news enough. Well, the the reality of the the crimes. In other words, we get we get the spin. Okay, we can take another atrocity which involved twenty Black Britons. Is there, is there was another one coming. Yeah, Waco. Oh, Waco. Right. Yeah, okay. 20 black Britons were burned, killed. Burned alive, if I remember rightly. Pardon? Burned, burned alive. alive. Bur burned alive. Burned alive. Oh, some of them were shot, yeah. Uh, th th those that weren't shot. Mm, yeah. All right. Well, you think this... Um, and, and you have given us thoughts of a mass murderer and a bunch of exterminators. Well, I mean, uh, we, we can't really call uh, the five victims uh, we can't classify that as mass murder as compared to Lockerbie or the Oklahoma bombing oh we? you've given us a couple more mm -hmm. yeah we're crowded our minds now with yep. um with um the very the, the most appalling of human mm. tragedies thank you is there any kind of value that's to be had from the images that you are feeding us um well it's, what's the point well, the point is to look at the the actual um, why, the actual sentences. For instance, why, um, why though? Why is this on your mind at ten to six on this otherwise impeccable Saturday morning, as uh, the birds begin their, mm. their routine and glorious ritual of sound and sight, as the as the sky begins to lighten with the sun of a one and only day that is this one, with all that there is. Why do you have to bring us the Moors murders in coupling with the Nazis, in coupling with Lockerbie, and, um, sorry, what was the other one? The Oklahoma Oh, the Oklahoma mm. yes. Yeah. Well, um, Welcome to your world, but why? Well, because um, if we're to compare and contrast the, the various... No, but why crimes. is this your... Why, can I, I'm really interested to know, why mm. is this your thought for the day? Why is this well, I mean, I your could, agenda? No, I could have brought you another thought for the day. The, uh, the Observer's John Sweeney's uh, documentary last Thursday on Chechnya and his rather startling voiceover, which definitely indicated that the Russians had planted the bombs themselves in Moscow. Yes, but why? Why is this on your mind? Does it worry you that this is on your mind at 10 to 6 this Saturday morning? Does well, it, it concern you? It concerns me that the, these sorts of aspects of uh, life aren't getting the coverage even within the broadsheet press. In other words, we've got Mr. Blair currently in, in, uh, in Russia and he's going to be, he has said, you know, Putin is combating terrorists, mm. whereas the Observer's Ace reporter on the spot. Uh, what, what's, what's your name again? Steve. How old are you? Old enough. Would you mind me asking what age you are? Uh, I'm in my 40s. You're in your 40s. What's your line? What, what's your profession? Uh, I don't have a profession at the moment, but... Um, what did you do? Oh, just um, administrative work. In, in what sort of capacity? 